Fitts law and also steering law are two examples of models for basic motor tasks. But we typically assume that users and humans in general are conscious beings, right? Um, so there's more than just moving their limbs, there's also happening, things happening in the brain. And what we do now is we look at one example of a very basic model that describes how long it takes to find an item in a list. And well, the conclusion that you hopefully get away from it is that it's good to group or sort items in a list or in a menu. So let's start with an exercise. Uh, what you will see, find here is a list of countries. And the task is now to find Denmark. So somewhere in this list is Denmark and well, your task is to find Denmark and then look at how long did you take. So I hope you all found it. Uh, I did, but I saw the slide before. So that wasn't too difficult, but it took quite a while. And uh, now the question is, what does, does it depend on? Well, the only thing that we have is the number of items. And we figured out that, well, the list was unordered, or at least we did not know the order. So the time we need to find Denmark obviously increases with n. So the larger the list, the longer it takes. And the question is, in big O notation, what's the time complexity of this task? Well, we can think about, like, how do we find it? And we actually have to look at each and every item. So we look at first one, is it Denmark? Oh, no. And then we go on until we find Denmark. And, well, if the list is twice as long, we need twice as much time to find this specific item. So let's look at another example. The task is the same, find Denmark, but this time the list is ordered. So it's ordered by alphabet. So countries with A come first, countries with Z come last. So again, I hope you found Denmark and well, we still have N, but now we have a known order. And well, still time obviously increases with N, but it's not linear anymore. So if we make the list twice as long, we wouldn't expect that we need twice as much time. And we can think about that, how would a computer solve that? And well, if we know the list is ordered, what we would do is we will start at the center. So in the middle of the list, we would look at that um, and then we would figure out is Denmark in the first half of the list or in the second half of the list. And then we would repeat this process. And well, if we would do that, then just basic computer science would tell us this is in big O notation, log N, right? We don't know how long it takes precisely, but that for a computer would depend of obviously on the computer model, how long it takes to do a comparison, all these things. But the time complexity would be log n. So that is exactly what humans do, right? So we might not always have the same structured process, but overall, we also need log n time in order to find items in an ordered list. Uh, this has been studied. Uh, this is from a study from 2005 uh, from SEO, and they, well, this is just a replica of the original study. And the original study was uh, done by Hick and Hyman. So it's often called the Hick's law or Hick Hyman law. And so the original apparatus they built uh, in order to figure that out uh, was quite complicated. So there was a button connected to each and every finger and then there are things showing up on the screen and, and these things, right? This was a lot of 
physical interface. Nowadays, we would typically use a computer for that to figure things like that out. But by back in the days, uh, this could also already been studied, right? And they figured out, well, it is actually log n, so that's the time complexity. So given n equally probable choices, the average correction time t required to choose among the choices is approximately t, so that's the time, equals b, that's the constant, uh, multiplied by log of n plus 1. So n is the number of items in the list. And well, common practical values are for b are 150 milliseconds per bit. Oh, we like look back in Fitz Law and I, you know, where does this bit come from? Is this, it's the same bit, so it's about information, information density. And the reason is still because it's inspired by information theory. But well, the relationship to a bit in the classical computer science sense, it makes sense in a way because it's still about information, um, but yeah. So Higgs law is often used to motivate menu designs. Um, so if you know the list is unordered, we know that users have to search in a linear fashion through this list and on average they have to visit half of the items. So they start in the top and then they end up in the bottom and well, yeah, then it's not very good and it takes quite a while. In an ordered list, the search time is log of the length of list. So it's much, much faster when the list becomes longer. So if you design a menu, you want to provide an order for the menu. But, well, if you look at actual menus, they're rarely ordered in an alphabetic way. So this is an example from a real world application. But what you see here is that items are grouped. So it's this whole stack of new stuff, new audio track, new stereo track. And if as a user, I would search for something that's not new. So I want to, I don't know, remove tracks. I look at the first part and like import, I'm not interested in import. So I can skip until the next group. Then there's added ID3 tags, maybe I have to read that, but then there's this new block and I can like look at the first one and then uh, yeah, skip this block. So I don't have to search linear in a linear way anymore because the menu provides me with a grouping. So it's a good idea to group and order things, but it's not necessarily a good idea to order them in an alphabetic way. So there can be better orders than just using the alphabet. But that, of course, depends on the interface. But we also have to keep in mind that after a while, users might know the menu or they have experience with similar menus. So if you design a menu and there are already common applications using similar items in similar menus, you might want to adopt their menu structure because then it isn't an unknown list anymore. So remember, Hickman's law only works for unknown lists, unknown orders, or alphabetic orders or sorted ones. But they're not about the law is not about things that people already know. Um, so if I adopt the interaction with these menus, then I become also faster. But it's much easier to adopt a menu if a menu provides me with structure and with order.